and welcome to this class. In this class, we are going to study about the history of microbiology. Okay. So, before starting about the history, I am going to explain about the mindset of scientists. Yeah, mindset of scientists in the earlier days. Okay, earlier days when our biology was not as established as it is today. Okay, so scientists were working on the two concepts. First was spontaneous generation, and second was against the spontaneous generation okay so what happens in the spontaneous generation is they believe that life arises from non living okay so they basically believe in this concept by saying that the mice mice arise from uh, grains grains in store okay without anything without any egg or anything as they can't see the previous i mean mother mice and who were against the spontaneous generation they believe that life arises from pre existing life pre existing life okay so basically as we are going to learn about the history of microbiology of course i'm going to start with the father of microbiology so the father of micro microbiology is Anthony van Leeuwenhoek. In some books you will see Louis Pasteur also. But basically Anthony van Leeuwenhoek was the father of microbiology because he was the one who discovered animal cues. And basically he, he was not that knowledgeable at that time. But animal cues were actually microorganisms. Okay. So Anthony van Leeuwenhoek was a businessman. Basically. Uh, he was a businessman but he has some hobby in glassware industry also he used to make some simple lenses single lenses and used to observe the pattern of clothes and this is how his, his interest uh, you know went up and he started to observe rain urine cow dung teeth scrapings plant fluids and blood circulations of tail of salamander etc and various other things also okay and while doing this he once did was he mixed the raindrop and his own teeth scraping and in that he was able to see some you know shapes i'm just drawing it roughly right now but he can also see a little movement of those shapes thus he came to a conclusion that these are some small animals of the size of molecules thus naming them animal cues okay he was the one who named animal cues animal cues as in the concept of microorganisms okay so basically starting with the concept was there was two scientists or not scientists but you can say two persons one was lucretus and other was gramello they both were from different timeline but what they proposed was they proposed that diseases are spread from certain invisible creatures and they called them contagium okay basically he was the one who proposed the theory and this Gramello fellow, he gave the term contagium using Latin language. Okay. So this was the concept from where the concept of microorganism initially originated to our world. Okay. So we will start with the Robert Hooke. As you know, in 1665, he discovered the cork. Okay. He, I mean, he observed cork under microscope, thus calling them as cells. But they were dead cells. Okay. So what he did was he used 200x microscope. While our Anthony von Leeuwenhoek was using some simple microscope, but he used compound microscope of 200x magnification, and he observed various insect larvae, seeds, uh, seeds, feather, hair, cork, etc. And he even I think it was London Society he incurred his work to. Okay. So but he was not able to observe living bacteria or living microorganism at that time due to his wrong conditions of observation okay so the thing is that the particular you know light reflection and all which we need to observe the microorganism was not available at that time so robert who was unable to observe it okay and there was also a concept of origin of life from where the theory of spontaneous generation arises Right? Spontaneous generation, I have explained to you that how they arise like from non-living to living. Okay. 
so then we will move to aristotle aristotle as you know the father of classification who classified uh, organisms into land living and water living i think okay but uh, aristotle in regard to microorganism he said that living arise from non living uh, following the example of you know old people like how uh, how meat when spoiled produce maggots how mice arise from stores which are not uh, you know there is nothing living in the store then also mice somehow get born there okay and after aristotle came francisco reddy francisco reddy was a little more scientific compared to aristotle aristotle was scientific but not to the certain extent okay so what francisco reddy did was he was actually against aristotle and spontaneous generation theory okay he believed that life arise from living only that's why what he did was he he took three container one two three placed meat here meat this is also meat and this is also meat okay this red colored meat okay red it here also meat okay then what he did was he opened the first container this first container was remained open okay while second container was fully covered fully covered uh using a paper okay and the third the third container was uh, having a wire wired mesh what we call in hindi is jali i think and he covered the third with the with that mesh mesh wire mesh wire sheet okay so what happened was because first was open and uh, these flies came in contact with the meat that's why maggot was produced in first okay but the maggot was not produced in second and third and if you uh, observe them and came to a conclusion then it is it can be said that maggot was produced as flies were being uh, coming in contact with the meat and they were laying eggs and when he observed very carefully then he observed that on this wired mesh he observed a certain amount of eggs present on it okay the meat was spoiled in case 2 and case 3 also just like in case 1 but without maggot but when john lidham uh, took those eggs from the mesh and made them in contact with the meat then he saw again the formation of maggot okay and that's why he came to a conclusion that uh, life arises from living not non living okay and then comes antony von leeuwenhoek and as you can uh not you can but as i have explained you earlier where is it uh, here okay he is a father of microbiology and is he has observed these 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 kind of things okay but the thing is he only observed he didn't do anything in order to prove his findings okay that's why he was not able to uh, prove anything but basically because he was the first one to observe microorganism that's why we call him father of microbiology then after him came john nidham into picture okay the john nidham what he did was he made boiled mutton broth okay so he took the mutton broth in a container and boiled it in hope that if there are microorganism present beforehand in that mutton then they will get destroyed and no cloudiness will be observed no no cloudiness which will prove that uh, which will prove against against spontaneous generation okay so what he did was he boiled the mutton broth and then covered them but the thing was while he covered them okay see when he covered the flask or container before that microorganism must have entered the flask that's why what happened was some container although were remained cleared but other all were turbid so he thought that yes it can be possible that uh, microorganisms or you can say living can arise from non living thus he gave he gave his concept stating that there is some vital force inside non living which can help form living organism out of non living okay and after him came lazaro splanzani okay and he proved nidham's experiment see here john nidham okay he also did almost same thing but what he did uh, instead of this mutton broth here he took hay infusion okay 
hay is like a kind of dried grass okay so he used hay infusions and he what he did was he scaled it up like uh, john idam was doing it in a small container he used a larger container scaled it up then he did it for 3 and 1/2 hour and he observed that no living was produced in the container the container remained clear there was no turbidity in it so he explained that john idam okay john idam was uh, doing something wrong which was uh, he was his i mean his broth was getting contaminated uh, before he was sealing the container okay then after louis felenzani who was against okay against spontaneous generation theory then after him came louis pasteur of course this fellow is also against spontaneous generation and you will know why first of all he was uh, uh, the one who proved that microorganism have role in wine and vinegar production production same goes for the spoilage also spoilage actually uh, louis pasteur's friend was the owner of a wine company or you can say beverage company and he was observing some sort of spoilage in his wine okay so of course if you have spoilage in the wine how can you drink that's why louis pasteur came into the picture and he observed the microorganism there okay and he also performed the swine swan neck experiment okay uh, let me explain you this is our simple round bottom flask but what he did was he curved the neck in the shape of the neck of a swan so so that when the air will enter in it will the, all the microorganism will remain in this area and the sample or you can say whatever his infusion was it will remain clear without any turbidity proving that microorganism enter through air okay and he proved that microorganism cause fermentation was also his experiment and then pasteurization which we are doing still date like 62 or 60, let me write 62 to 63 degree celsius for 30 minute and 72 degree celsius for 15 second can prevent milk spoilage okay and can also kill various microorganism in milk okay which can cause disease then he worked on anthrax bacillus and contributed for the vaccine development okay and this anthrax bacillus was basically he followed edward jenner uh, and worked against rabies also by making vaccine against rabies okay then after louis pasteur come into picture who came into picture was robert koch but let me tell you edward jenner here he worked around the same era as louis pasteur and robert koch as you all know he gave four postulates have i written yeah four postulates robert koch which is regarding the disease transmission okay he work on anthrax bacillus so basically uh, endospore formation endospore formation endospore formation was observed by robert koch okay have i written it somewhere here endospore formation okay and his colleague r j petri he invented petri dish which we still use today in order to grow microorganism he developed the method of robert koch developed the method of fixing staining and photographing the bacteria and later observed it under microscope and easily observed the characteristics of the microorganism solid media was also discovered by robert koch and today we use nutrient broth as a simple broth you can say and this broth is used for many experiment and it was also discovered by robert koch which contain you know beef extract some amount of agar some yeast extract and all okay and he also found that mycobacterium tuberculosis was the causative agent for tb and vibrio cholerae was the causative agent for cholera first course postulate was given by him of course and endospores were also given by him then comes edward jenner who also achieved a milestone in the world of microbiology so what he did was he discovered vaccine so we can say he is the father of vaccine also so it was a uh, a case when the vaccine endemic was happening in a certain area and many were dying but there was a girl who was suffering from cowpox at that time at that time and that's why she did not get any smallpox this girl claimed that she did not get smallpox due to being infected by cowpox earlier and that's how uh, edward jenner came into picture what he did was he took this uh, i mean yeah he took the cowpox 
uh, fluid a box fluid and injected it into a boy and boy recovered in 2 to 10 days so that's how he was able to create vaccine out of cow box and curing the smallpox case okay then following this particular example Louis Pasteur came into picture and he followed this principle to create his vaccine which was against anthrax yeah uh, which was against rabies okay so he was able to cure a rabid boy Louis Pasteur okay then after Edward Jenner we are going to discuss about Bordet a little okay and he was the one who found the bacterial cidal property of serum right you know blood blood contained two component which are formed elements formed elements and the other one is fluid part fluid part which is called plasma okay and if uh, we removed coagulating agent coagulating agents from this uh, plasma then we are left with serum and serum contain two characters or at that time you call, used to call them factors which we call today antibody and complement okay antibody you all know y shaped are of five different types and complement are the set of 20 proteins which are formed by liver and remain inactive in blood until we basically need them then comes into picture Paul Elrich and Ellie Mackinoff Mackinkoff Mackinkoff whatever you want to say her I don't know the exact pronunciation but we'll continue so Paul Elrich uh, Elrich was what he did was he invented chemotherapy which we still use for you know against cancer and Ellie what she observed she observed the leukocytes some leukocytes which having phagocytic uh, property so basically what they did was the phagocytic cells they engulf they engulf antigen completely and destroying them okay then comes into picture the alexander Fleming. you know the first person to discover antibiotic antibiotic okay so he was uh, i think he was to streptococci he was working with streptococci okay please wait a little okay streptococci he was working with streptococci and that time he observed some clear zones of the streptococci and when he found that there were some spores spores of uh, fungi okay mm, which was penicillium penicillium notatum okay and this produced this penicillin drug against microorganism that's why he was able to create this wonder drug uh, which was used for many decades and today we are also using this penicillium drug but we are not using extracting it from notatum but from chrysogenum chrysogenum penicillium chrysogenum microorganism okay then comes into picture the joseph lister he was called as the father of antiseptic surgery because whenever uh, he used to use some surgical tools he used to wash them with carbolic acid or you can say phenol although that were carcinogenic but that carcinogenic phenol can clear the you know equipment so that no diseases were spread while we are uh, doing some surgery on patient okay then comes Carl Landsteiner who was the person who you know discovered blood grouping and due to his finding blood transfusion blood transfusion is made easy so we are able to save many lives okay uh, they are some scientists which worked in the field of microorganisms or sorry not microorganisms but in the field of microbiology and there are many other scientists which I have not named some are from the field of virology okay some from the field of uh, mycology mycology various you know, creates instrumentation instrumentations okay they are all very important but basically these were some major historical historically important micro scientists which worked in the field of microorganism that's it for this class thank you very much and see you soon